there. Today I'm with my dear friend Amanda and we are talking about the Whole30 diet, which you may have heard about. It's a bit controversial, but I know that it's really helped you a lot. So I thought that today we would just discuss Amanda's experiences with the diet in case it's something that you're thinking about for yourself. You can weigh out the options and see if it might be something that works for you. Full disclaimer, neither of us is a nutritionist or a dietitian or anything. You're a photographer. I'm an actor. We are just regular people who've used this. Well, you have. I have. I have. And that does not make me an expert. So, you know, this is just discussing our own experiences. How did you decide to try Whole30 over all of the hundreds of diets that are out there? Right here and there. I didn't go on a diet. I, I wanted to feel better because at my weight, I was lazy all the time. I didn't feel good. I, did, I knew I was eating poorly and I wanted more than a diet that was just gonna help me drop weight because I know how to do that. I'm just lazy about it. I wanted to feel better and I wanted to learn how to eat properly. And a girlfriend of mine suggested I look at this and I did and we actually wound up doing it together. And the balance of food, you know, vegetables, proteins, the way everything works together for me because I like to cook and because one of the fats I could have is clarified butter, well, well ghee, same thing, that I found things, when I looked at the recipes they laid out for you, I found that there was a, so many options that I could keep myself satisfied and satiated without starving myself or being cranky for most of the time, except when you're detoxing. But you know, and, and for me, it's worked wonders. It's, it, I can eat like this almost every day now. But did you consult a doctor before starting this program? I had spoken with a doctor on the phone, my doctor who had seen me recently. I did not go in for a physical. I am actually going in for a physical next month. But I did call my doctor and explain to him what the program was, had him look at it a little online. And at the weight I was at, which can, can I say, was almost 50 pounds heavier than I am now, um, he said, it's certainly not gonna hurt. I wasn't taking pills, I, you know, and he, and he told me, if you feel bad, stop. It's so, yes, but no, so. Was it hard to follow? No. It is, the way they have laid out this program, I, I prefer to call it a program versus a diet because it's not really a diet. It, it, the way they have it laid out is it resets, it's supposed to reset your brain and the way you think about food and what you're putting in your body as much as the actual putting in your body and what you do. Their program online, in their books, talks to you like you're a real human being. It's not laid out in medical terminology. They talk about it, I think it's day four off the top of my mind and they go by day by day in the book. And they talk about on day four, you're gonna wanna kill all the things. And that's, <laughs> the, that's the chapter of the book. And I went, okay, this girl who wrote this book, she's funny, she gets me. It was almost like as I read along and learned things, which I did every day, I felt like I was talking to a girlfriend. I didn't feel like I was being told what to do all the time. This diet has rated really, really low by a lot of experts. How do you think it compares to other diets that you've done? You've done. Well, I've done Atkins. I've done other versions of the high protein, low carb. I even did a, I did a bodybuilder diet, which I think I almost had a heart attack. I had pounding in my chest and that was eating six times a day, but no carbs. Every third day you could have a bowl of oatmeal. And that's just crazy. That's just, in my brain, the way my body works, I need to learn every day how, how to be better, for lack of a better term. And it's incredibly challenging. They actually refer to it on the cover of the book as a challenge. It's, it's incredibly challenging, it's difficult. You have to be able to cook, you have to be open to making the, the changes, but for me, it's the best thing I've ever done. Diet-wise, eating-wise, it's, it's been a complete life changer for me. Now, it's incredibly restrictive. There's other 
programs that are close to it that aren't quite as restrictive because you're talking about no chemical additives. You're talking about no sugar, no sweeteners, no Splenda, no sweet and low. The only sweetener you have is from fruit juice for your cooking, which you do not drink. You know, there's, there's no soy, there's no dairy, there's no wheat, there's no gluten, there's no legumes, there's no alcohol. There's a, so it's incredibly restrictive. And I would imagine, not being an expert, that if you did this and made it through and went back to your regular way of eating when you were done, that it would rank low because it's all just going to come back. And on top of that, chances are you're going to be sick because you're basically eliminating. So you're eliminating all the things in your diet that can upset your gut, that can cause you to have anxiety attacks, that can do all of this stuff, which I thought was all a bunch of hooey before I did this. So I can see where it would rate low if you don't continue to learn from it. If you don't take the things you've learned and take that into your life after the Whole30, then it would rank low because it is a challenge. Do you think anyone can do Whole30? I would like to say yes, but I don't think so. I think, I think that if you have the stamina to do it, yes. But if you're running around and you have six kids, it's going to be more difficult. If you don't cook, if your kitchen is used to keep your sweaters in, it's not going to work because you have to have the ability to plan what you're going to eat, to take the time to cook the things. I make my own mayonnaise. I make my own ketchup. I make my own bone broths. Everything I cook, I cook from scratch when I am on the Whole30. There are some things you can find on the market that are geared towards Whole30 that are frozen paleo meals and all that, but you can't do it. You have to be able to grocery shop, you have to be able to cook, you have to be able to be aware of what you're eating and when you're eating well, it. Like this. You know, you have to work at it. This really is a huge undertaking. What advice would you give to somebody who's looking to, to start the Whole30? One of the great things about this program, just let me say, is that you can find all the information online and it's free. You don't have to, you know, buy food. You don't have to do what they say. Well, you have to do what they say, obviously, but you, you, you can read all about it before you invest in the book, which I highly recommend investing in the book because, can I show you? Mm -hmm. This is my dirty, messed up copy of the Whole30. And if you see through it, I've got all these pages that are marked because I used, oh, by the way, there's even a whole Thanksgiving dinner in here. I just like to say that for the record. Um, I used it so much and it's not just the recipes. I, you know, I would go through and it does the day by day and it, it just explains everything and I have it in one central location where I didn't have to ever wonder or look up something. I had it all right here. So I highly recommend the book. I think it's under $20 on Amazon now. Okay. But you have to prep. You have to be prepared and you can't put pressure on yourself. That's good that's, to know. That's very important. You can't think of every minute of every day till it ends. You have to be open to learning as you go because a huge part of this program is learning as you go. From your experience, what would you say the best part of this has been? The best part of Whole30 for me was definitely the way I felt. The most, the weight loss for me was secondary. I, I hoped to lose weight, but I did it because I needed to feel better. And this was something that you're taking everything out of your diet. So you're figuring out what makes you not feel good. Within a week after I got through detoxing off sugar, I am a lifelong anxiety sufferer. My father had it, I think my mother has it. it I suffer panic attacks four or five times a week. Xanax was in every room of my house. I finished my Whole30 the week of Thanksgiving. I have had three Xanax since the week of Thanksgiving. I did not have an anxiety attack. Once I cut out that sugar, I did not have one single anxiety attack in that 30 days. The minute I ate sugar after, panic attack. No pains in my body. The little aches and pains stopped. The circles went away under my eyes. My body runs like a clock. 
the energy is through the roof, you sleep better. It's just, it's an unbelievable change. And it might not be sugar for someone else. It might be dairy, it might, whatever it is, it was life changing. I feel 20 years younger. I remember noticing and commenting when you first started this diet, you never once spoke about weight loss. You only talked about how you wanted to feel better. And mm -hmm. I remember I really, really admired that because so many people approach things like this with, I'm gonna lose all this weight. And, and it seems so healthy to me that you were thinking about, you never mentioned weight loss. You only talked about how you wanted to feel better. And, and I watched you struggle with it in those first few days when you were detoxing from the sugar and, and then you had a cold. Yeah, I, I just, it was rough with the cold because I was afraid to take cold medicine because cold medicine is full of chemicals and, and sugar. sugar. <laughs> but I remember watching you through this whole process and, and really, really noticing how just learning that sugar makes you have anxiety attacks. That was life changing for it's, you. It's, that's, I have to thank the Whole30 for so many, many things that have changed. They call them non-scale victories, is what they call them. And it, really it is. And weight loss was the last thing on my mind. And I have lost a ton of weight. Now I have a lot more weight I'd like to lose. And I'm actually on my second day of my second Whole30 and I feel much better than I did the first time because I haven't been consuming the amounts of sugar and the amounts of processed foods that I was before I went on Whole30 because it's reset my mind. I walked into Trader Joe's the other day and it was, uh, we were getting some stuff together for a movie night. I was by myself, my husband wasn't with me and I was in that frozen food section and I was looking at the pot stickers and the frozen pizzas and the, the, the macaroni and cheese and I thought, well, I haven't had this, I, I could have any of this stuff and I went, no, I think I'm just gonna get my prosciutto. You know what I mean? Like I just, my mind, my brain, looks at food completely different. I don't even know how to put it into words. I look at everything that goes into my body and I stop and I take a minute and I consider what I'm going to do and if I'm going to eat it. I had pasta the other night at an Italian restaurant. I know they make it from scratch. I know it's got no chemicals in it. And I said to the owner of the restaurant, I said, could you just, I'll pay for the whole thing. Just bring me half a bowl. Just want the spaghetti with the marinara. And I only ate half of the half of the bowl. And I was done. And it's, it wasn't because I was full. I just knew, okay, you had this. Now finish your salad. It's amazing to me. So I think you, you just sum up and say, the best part is, is retraining yourself. Yep. But that brings me to the next question. What is the worst part of this for you? You have to be very careful about when you go out to eat. I would go and have a salad and bring my own salad dressing because you make all your own salad dressings. And you know, and I would be all prepared and I was traveling for work. I was shooting a commercial in Las Vegas and I had brought a whole cooler bag with nuts and, and healthy things I could eat and salad fixings and my own dressing and everything. And I went out with the crew and I specifically asked I'd like a piece of the chicken breast. How is it cooked? What kind of oil is it cooked in? Because your fats are restricted, you know, and they told me they could do it any way I wanted. I ate that piece of chicken. I went back to my hotel room and was violently ill. And that was, that, that was three weeks. I remember. Three weeks into it. And so you have to, you have to think about everything you do. Every time you're gonna put something in your mouth, you have to think about where did this come from? How did they cook it? And that's a great thing, because that goes into retraining, but I didn't pay enough attention. And it taught me to pay more attention. That's a valuable lesson right there. Mm -hmm. What was your number one takeaway from this? The greatest thing I got about it, out of Whole30 is definitely feeling 20 years younger. 20 years younger, less anxiety. I this has been one of the worst cold and flu seasons in years. I haven't gotten sick at all. Not, not a day of sniffles, nothing. And it's, I think it's my immune system from eating better. I, I really, really do. Going back to the, the fact that 
Well, this is an incredibly restrictive diet plan. Yes, it is. And I know you are somebody who really enjoys food. Do well, you do you think you get this if you don't enjoy food? <laughs> do you think this is something that is viable for people who really enjoy eating? Yes. I'll tell you why. Because the options for your food, even though you're very restricted in what you can eat, are unlimited. Last night, I made tortillas out of arrowroot flour and eggs and pork carnitas. And, and it's the best, car. and I anyone who knows me knows how much I love anything you can put in a taco. And all my pork carnitas were, were the pork, salt and pepper, a little broth, which you make yourself, and chili powder and cinnamon, a squeeze of lime, and some onions and garlic. It's better than, it's the best carnitas I've ever made. It's, the food is amazing. It's not like diet food at all. And within all of the restrictions, you relearn how to cook. And within, if you cook, within two weeks of doing the diet, you can look at recipes you've made for your family for years and just rethink based on the ingredients you're using for other things, how to make them work. I made my husband Swedish meatballs. I remember as you were going through this and you were like, oh, I adapted my grandmother's recipe. Yeah. So you were able to, to take a lot of your family recipes and Absolutely. make them Whole30 compliant. And you don't have to go by strictly what's in there. I think they have several cookbooks. and so You can go online. This is another thing I love about Whole30. You can go online and go, God, I really, it's what happened with the Swedish meatballs. I really, really miss Swedish meatballs. I Googled Whole30 compliant Swedish meatballs. There are so many people out there doing recipes and so many great resources that it's really, even though you're, you're restricted, you're unlimited. There's so many choices. I made meatballs with chicken, ground chicken, and I made it with coconut milk versus whole milk. And you know, it's just, I haven't had sugar in my house. I haven't had milk in my house. I haven't had cheese in my house, except for one party situation for months now. I really don't miss it. You learn how to eat without. What do you have to say to people who call this a fad diet? I don't think this is a fad diet. I think it's, I don't think it's a diet. I, I refuse to call it a diet. I've had this fight with several friends. It's a program. It's a retraining, if you will. And it's retraining your mind as much as it's retraining your body. And your body is so happy not to have boxed food, pre-processed stuff, McDonald's, whatever it is. And once you do it, you realize it's not a fad. You realize it's a way of life. Now you don't stay on Whole30 that restricted for more than the 30 days until you decide to do a restart again and go through it again. But it's changed the way I think about food every second of every day. What was it that you craved more than anything? The worst thing I craved from the day I started Whole30 to the day I finished and it was the one treat that I gave myself the night that I the night of the 31st day, I had a cheese pizza. I'm not a huge pizza fan. I don't, and I never like toppings on my pizza. I'll eat it at a party or whatever, but it's not something I crave. I thought I would crave yogurt, or I thought I would crave cake, or I thought I would crave a cheeseburger from, you know, in and out That was, that wasn't it. I craved a cheese pizza, and I think I craved it because it was bread, sugar in the sauce, and the dairy in the cheese. A lot of experts, a lot of bloggers have said this is too restrictive and it's too easy to fall off of it and to give up completely. What are your thoughts on that? I had hiccups. Everyone is going to have hiccups. It's, it's not going to be worth it unless you're challenged. You're not going to learn the lessons. I can go out and eat steak every day and eat this many vegetables and not eat any bread and not eat any rice and not eat any fruit because there's carbs in them. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna eventually go back to the way I was eating before. With this, even though it's restrictive and incredibly challenging, every step you take, you learn something new. 
and you carry it with you. There's no point in going out and eating chicken every day and planning to lose weight because you're eventually just gonna eat the cheese pizza. One of the things that I noticed uh, that I was so proud of you was when you did have a hiccup, you didn't beat yourself up. No. You said, we had a party, I ate cheese pizza or I had a glass of wine and today is a new day and I'm just moving forward. You didn't give up, you didn't quit and I really, really admired well, that. Well, technically they say, and you're supposed to start, please forgive me whole 30 people, you're supposed to start your 30 days over. Once I was past about the 10th day, which I had to, it was like wrestling myself. I could be sitting on my couch looking at the, the real housewives of wherever, and no one would know that this war was going on in my head. You could just have a little bit, just get some carob chips. It'll make the, you know, you could have a little bit, it'll be fun. I didn't break down with the food. I broke down with alcohol. And I did it, I picked an unfortunate time to do the Whole30 because I work in the horror movie community and I started it 10 days before Halloween. So I went to Halloween parties and one time I broke down and I had vodka. But I had vodka with a squeeze of fresh lemon and just boom. And I was like, well, I could start over, but I'm not going to. This time, now that I'm doing it again, there will be no alcohol because I know I don't need it. I've also planned to do it at this point where there's no celebrations coming up. It's February. Yeah, and I have friends that did it. My stepsister just finished. Congratulations to her, she did a great job. She's not really much of a cook and she managed to do this, do a fantastic job. But I had friends who said to me, I had a birthday recently and I had a party and friends were like, I just can't come. I'm doing the whole 30 because you inspired me to do it and I can't be around alcohol. So it's tough. I'm not saying I was perfect. I probably slipped up somewhere and don't even realize that I slipped up. But it's so worth it because the learning experience is just incredible. What was your best moment on whole 30? My best moment was the moment I put on one of my favorite shirts and I didn't realize I had even lost any weight. My husband and I were going to go somewhere and I was about maybe halfway through, just right around. And I put on my favorite shirt, which is a tight, it's a form-fitted shirt and it's tight. And I put it on and I realized that I had all this room. And not only did I have room, and I was so happy that I was losing weight, I, I was happy that I felt good about it. Like I wasn't going to fall back. Like this shirt, this shirt is never going to be tight on me again. I know that now because I know how to make better choices. 30 days without pizza or fried chicken, I can do that now. I don't know that I could have done it before. And like I said, it was hard. It was a battle daily, but I was able to get through it for the most part. I did screw up with the alcohol just a couple of times, I think two or three, but I didn't beat myself up about it. I had come too far. I had done too much to let that sink me. And I think if you can get through the first 11, 12 days of this, that you would feel the exact same way. It's amazing how it changes you. All right, what was your worst moment? The worst moment was when I threw up in Las Vegas. Okay, I remember that. You I called you crying. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> You know, and it, the, the, the bad moments for me weren't even the moments where I was having a brain boxing match over, you know, a slice of toast. Uh, first of all, I eliminated every, I gave a girlfriend of mine every piece of pasta, every bread, every grain. I got rid of it before I started. So it wasn't there for me, but it's America. There's a grocery store right down the street. I could go get the bagel if I really want the bagel. I don't want the bagel. Yeah. You know, so even though, and it's hard when people doubt you and you know that people are doubting you, even when they're your close friends and they're doubting you, it's, it's hard, but now I'm able to say, suck it, <laughs> suck it, bitches. 
because I did it. <laughs> I think You're now on your second round of Whole30. How do you think it's going to compare to your first? Well, first of all, I have the confidence to know I can get through it. I didn't know if I was going to make it two days the first time I did it. The thing that's great is the more you do the Whole30 your first time through, you're learning so much every day. You're figuring out how to adapt recipes. You're figuring out what works for you, what makes you feel good, what doesn't, you know, what you like to eat. I was not a huge coconut milk fan before I started this. Now, I could, when we finish this, I'm going to the store to buy things. I don't have to go when I'm in the store every three seconds because this is a great thing about Whole30. If you're in the grocery store and you really want to have, I don't know, a regular potato, because that's a debated thing on Whole30, you can Google, is a Yukon Gold Potato Whole30 compliant? And a list of things will pop up from the Whole30 website even themselves. They have forums, they have groups, they have all this free available stuff to you. You can find out in 20 seconds if you can have something that you want to have. I don't need to do that this time. I can walk into the store today and know exactly what I need. I can picture in my brain exactly what I'm going to eat. And, of course, there's green beans, because I fell madly in love with green beans on the Whole30. It's not a bad thing to fall in love with. No. So what would you say is your, your number one takeaway? My number one takeaway is that you can change. You can conquer demons. That I've had a relationship with food that is not great, and it's not because I have an eating disorder. It's just because... I grew up with when I was sad, food comforted me and food still comforts me. It's great that you're able to Google everything. I see that you got a lot of support. What were the websites that were the most helpful for you as you were going through Whole30? Well, the Whole30 website is amazing and you don't even have to know how, I still don't completely know how to navigate all of the tools that are on the website. But you don't have to. You can go to Google and say, this is bothering me. What can I do about this on the Whole30? And a page will pop up from the Whole30 website that you can go directly to where it's a forum where 14 people have talked about, I've had cramps in my legs for three days. What, what do I do? You can get any symptom you're having, anything that's going on, you can find support and answers and tips and suggestions too. And they came out with, I just have to say, I just got this for my second time around. This is their day by day book, which I think is pretty new. And every day it gives you a place to take notes, but it also gives you all kinds of tips. These are all the different, you're supposed to check off all the different things about how you feel. They give you tips and how to plan for it, how to prepare a template a basic template of, of what your meal should look like on your plate and how you know you're giving yourself the right amounts. And it's just so simple and easy to do as far as following it and finding support and finding information. So I love their website. I love the website Nom Nom Paleo. They're great. I mean, I found a gazillion different recipes and all you have to do is just put in Whole30 and you would be blown away by how many blogs, recipes, all of that that you can find. Instant Pots. Instant Pots. Instant Pots. I know you are a big fan of Instant Pots. I am a big fan of Instant Pots, and I wish I got an Instant Pot for Christmas. So, well, thank you, my husband, who drove around to four Targets to find me an Instant Pot the day before Christmas Eve. We love you, Ken. We love you, Ken. Um, I... You make your own broth. You make your own foods. You're constantly cooking so that you have enough to eat. At least one or two days a week, you've got to dedicate the time. An Instant Pot will change the way you cook. Broth, good bone broth with collagen, which is a huge fundamental thing in the Whole30. It takes me 36 hours to make in a crock pot. It takes an hour and 20 minutes. Oh my. In the Instant Pot. And it's better. It's better. You can cook your chicken breasts in five minutes. You can cook a week's worth of sweet potatoes in 20 minutes. If you can afford it, spend the $100, buy the seven quart Instant Pot, you won't regret it. Oh, dude, I'm totally gonna be putting Instant Pot links down below and maybe sell one because, you know, Amazon affiliate. Buy the Instant 
honest. Hey, at least I'm honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> buy the Instant Pot. I know. If I cooked, I'd buy an Instant Pot. So I think it would be really challenging for people who don't cook. So the Instant Pot would probably really help. It's very, very helpful. And if you get the seven in one, you have so many, you can sear in it. I, I don't want to start doing okay, it. We're not doing an Instant Pot. Yeah. But it will help you immensely. They don't mean, need me to advertise. They're no. doing just fine. They're doing just fine. Did you spend a lot of time researching different plans before embarking on Whole30? I did. I did. I looked at a lot of different diets, a lot of different plans, because I knew I had to do something. I just didn't know how I was going to do it because I'd given up. Where was the diet or the program or plan or whatever you want to call it that was going to let me have a sweet potato with butter and salt? Where, where was that? You know where it was? Whole30, because you can have butter. You have to use the ghee, which is butter with all the dairy and whey removed, but I can still have that flavor that I want and get that satisfaction that I want at the same time while making myself feel better. Now, can you pour a half a cup of melted ghee on something? No, of course not. But it was literally, sometimes I'd eat a sweet potato with a little ghee and salt with some protein, and I would actually feel guilty. Like I was cheating, you know, but I wasn't. So for me, that's what makes the difference is I'm eating whole, I'm eating clean, and I'm eating better. I'm not, even though you're restricted, there's so many, once you start eating clean, there's so many options. Whoever thought I would like turkey bologna? Not me. <laughs> What's your best advice for somebody who's considering doing this? To have faith in yourself because you can do it. It is a huge challenge. It is a huge undertaking. I was fortunate that my best friend and I did it together. Um, but you can always find someone to answer a question online, even if you're doing it by yourself, and to plan and to prepare. Take a day a week when you're not working. I make my own mayonnaise, which is in the book. You can get a Whole30 compliant mayonnaise if you want to go out and buy it. You have to research. You have to read a label. I wasn't properly reading labels before. You have to do all that, and, and you have to allow yourself room to explore things that you wouldn't have explored before. If you had told me I was going to be making tortillas out of arrowroot powder, I would have told you, no, 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 no. And so you have to be willing to be open. You, there's so much information given to you, you have to be willing to be open to receiving the information. And buy the book. I'm not trying to sell the book, but the book is so helpful. So buy the book. Yeah. It really makes and, a difference. And ultimately, I mean, what can a book cost? 20 bucks? 20 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. 20 bucks to change your life. I'd say it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you have it at your fingertips at all times. Okay, did you, um, since we're speaking about money, did you did you buy anything from their website? No. So you just bought the book? They, the bookstore? They, yeah, I bought, I bought it on Amazon. They have Whole30 products that they endorse. Let's talk about breakfast. Just in this. I love bacon and eggs. You can't have, you can't go to your store. We're on like kind of a high protein diet that you're doing, you know, like a keto diet. You can just go grab the bacon on sale. You can't do that. You gotta find the bacon that has no sugar, that isn't cured with sugar, that doesn't have any carrageens in it, no nitrates, any of that stuff. And they have in the back of the book, names of companies that make that. One, they sell at Whole Foods, which I love. But you have to be willing to find, search out certain products. I don't know if Whole30 makes any money on it. I, I have no idea. But they don't have products that they're trying to sell you. And that is also a big difference, a huge thing to me. It's called Whole30 because it's whole food. It's whole fresh food. And your food won't last. So Because it doesn't make, have preservatives. Make extra so you always have something on hand and freeze it. Get to know Ziploc. I like to think of this whole experience not because I did Whole30, but because I went on this journey. And it's changed my life so much every single day. Every day I make a different choice because of 30 days in October and November.
it's supposed to be not about the journey, but it's so about the journey. And my journey will never, ever end now because I did this. I am so proud of you. Thank you. For your initial 30 days. And then as I watched you after the 30 days, and you, you did reintroduce some things in your life. I remember that day when you were like, I'm going to go have a bagel. But you and I couldn't find a bagel. Do you remember? I went to three places, and every place was sold out of bagels. I'm like, come on! I just want my bagel. <laughs> it was the morning after I finished. I couldn't find a bagel anywhere. So God did not want you to have a bagel. No, and I didn't. You've you've really, you've really changed your diet. You've I've watched as you've changed it. You've reintroduced things into your diet, and you've you've watched. I, particularly, I keep going back to the sugar. I, I watched you have some cake and then have a panic attack. Yeah, I had a panic attack the next day. And then, and then you went, cake, give the cake away. I don't need the cake. I did give the cake away. That was, that was rough. Yeah, but you Sorry. knew that that moment of pleasure was going to give you anxiety. No, we're not even talking about... Oh, a moment of the, on the lips forever on the hips. We're talking anxiety attacks. Tearful, shaking, panic attacks about nothing and trying to figure out where was it coming from and there was no answer for it other than I ate a piece of birthday cake because it was my birthday. My body doesn't care that it's my birthday. My body doesn't want the sugar in it. And a very important part of Whole30 is your reintroduction. That means reintroducing foods after you finish. I did not bother to read that section because I, I didn't want to read it at the beginning. I didn't want to read it in the middle. I wanted to read it. So two days before I finished Whole30, two days before Thanksgiving, I read the reintroduction. And you must, must, must take that seriously. Because if you go through this program and you avoid reading that and learning about that, you are going to be seriously upset with yourself because you reintroduce one thing at a time and then give your body two days to see how it feels. Instead, I finished two days before Thanksgiving and I went to a pig roast and I ate the cheese and I ate the pie and I ate the pig and less than I would have eaten before, but you get really, really sick. So please keep in mind, the closer you get to the end, please pay attention to the reintroduction or you may come to greatly regret it. Well, just like your experience in Vegas with the chicken. The chicken. Yeah. I was just thinking about the chicken. Oh. <laughs> so, Whole30, it's something you've read about. Uh, you may have said, no, that's not for me. Maybe it is for you. The important thing I think for everyone is to be aware of what you're eating and how it's going to affect your body in so many ways beyond weight. It's it's going to affect your skin, your eyes, your 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 everything. Everything. Your fingernails, the way your hair grows. Everything changes when you change to clean eating. And if you had told me that, I would have called you a hippie and told you to go get some crystals and, <laughs> and have a piece of tofu, which, by the way, you cannot have on Whole30. That's okay. Nobody wants tofu. Uh, you, I know somebody wants tofu, so that's going to get me a whole bunch of hate comments. And I eat tofu, but I don't like it. Uh, but, but you know what I'm saying is I would have never, ever believed it until I had seen it myself. Every single physical ailment I have had or been suffering from, including my back, which is not weight related, is better now. I have less problems. I don't get sick. I'm not exhausted at three o'clock in the afternoon. I don't have aches and pains. I get everything in my whole physiology has changed because I changed the way I eat. So start thinking about what you're putting in your mouth and how it may affect your body. Drop your comments down below. Have you tried Whole30? Have you tried Atkins? Have you tried the keto diet? What are your thoughts about diet, about food programs, about eliminating something from your diet for 30 days to see how it affects your body? 
drop those comments down below. I will have links for you, as many as we can possibly come up with about Whole30 down in the description box. Thank you for watching. I love you bunches, and I will talk to you very soon.